All right, guys, welcome back. 1776 or bust. And on the table, you see a beautiful collection of hammer fired handguns. Now, interestingly enough, I've actually gone, I feel like I'm like in a time warp. You know, a lot of people are going for those modern striker fired polymer wonders in the world. And while I love them, uh, you know, again, it's very hard to move away from them completely. I also have to say that there's still something to be had with a hammer fired handgun. Now, some people and some critics out there and some quote unquote experts will say, these, these guns are stupid. You shouldn't own them because they're too old and they have no purpose anymore. Well, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm not saying they're wrong, but at the same time, I don't think necessarily my opinion has to match theirs. So I've actually seen myself go backwards. I, I've actually moved away a lot from striker fired handguns and are now really into this hammer fired world. And I think it's for the better, at least for me. Now, one of the things that's get, that always gets asked a lot is, or I should say said a lot, is the fact that it's always about the, the trigger pulls and the inconsistency of the trigger pull, knowing that you have a, a pretty heavy double action. And, you know, whether or not it's a light or moderate pull on that single action. Now, I'm going to tell you in regards to striker fired handguns, non modified striker handguns are usually going to be ro rolling at about five and a half pounds. Uh, I would say that's a good average to use, maybe a little bit lower, maybe slightly higher but anywhere from five and a half to maybe six pounds out of the box, depending, of course, on the handgun and the manufacturer. But even unlike my Brett APX, that thing was pulling about six pounds. Uh, my Glock's about five and three quarters to six pounds. The Sig P320 is six pounds. So the list goes on and on with about a six pound trigger pull. And then you go to the double actions and the single actions, and you start to realize, boy, you know, this gun right here, it's a beautiful gun, works really well. But I will tell you that double action is pretty heavy. Um, you can feel the, the, the actual tension on the spring and, uh, you know, you know where to stage it after you spend some time with the gun, you know how to stage that hammer where you can get a decent pull, but you still got some movement just because of that heaviness on that first trigger pull. The secondary trigger pull or your single action is actually very good. Uh, in this case, it's fairly short, a little bit of sponginess and a little bit of, of pre-travel or whatever you want to call that. And right there is where it stages again. And then you get a really nice drop of that single action. So the question is always going to be, can you do something with these handguns? And my answer to that is yes. And it doesn't have to cost you hundreds of dollars to do it. Now, of course, it depends on what you want to be. If you want to have one of these guns that has a four pound double action and like a one and a half pound single action, then sure, pour hundreds of dollars into this. No problem if that's what you choose to do. But in a lot of these guns, um, as a matter of fact, uh, la, la, let's see, this one, this one, and this one. These three have all been modified a little bit. These three have not. Um, the M9A3 has needed nothing. Uh, what it came with in the factory spring-wise has been perfect. The double action is a very, very nice smooth double action. Uh, and it just breaks just really nicely. The single action and the reset is just right there. Fantastic. And very, very little movement on that trigger. So this gun has not needed anything. The P01s that you see here, um, the urban gray and the black, uh, they did need a little bit of work. And I'm going to explain why by using the PCR. Now, this PCR you see in front of you is not modified at all. There is absolutely nothing with this, with the exception of the front dot, which is a meprolite uh, tritium dot. Eventually, I'm going to replace this rear sight, but, you know, day by day. So in regards to this trigger, the first thing you're going to notice is if you get a PCR or P01, that double action is fairly heavy. Um, it's, it's incredibly heavy, really, when you think about it, because you can feel that pressure on your finger. And more importantly, you do feel the tension on that spring right about when it's about to break. So it can be kind of a, a, a work in progress in regards to really getting good with this gun. As a matter of fact, just to kind of show you, and I'm going to put it in half cock because most people will carry in half cock. Nobody will call, you know, will drop the hammer completely if you have a decocker. But to give you an idea of what this thing is pulling at, non-changed or non-modified. So here's your double action pull in half cock position. So my first pull is nine pounds, 3.8 ounces. Now, not the heaviest in the world, but at the same time, it's definitely not the lightest and it could be better. Oops, let me do that again. Hold on one second. Actually, do that. It's actually holding the hammer. Duh. <laughs> so let's do this again. So I've got nine pounds, 13 ounces. So when we look at this trigger, we're getting close to the 10 pound mark. As a matter of fact, I'll do it one more time uh, just to see what we get. So nine pounds, 2.3 ounces with an average of nine pounds, 7.6 ounces. So again, not necessarily the heaviest double action pull, but I definitely think it needs some work. I think it could be a little bit lower. Me, preferentially, anywhere in the seven and a half to eight pound range is usually a good double action pull. Now in regards to this gun with the single action, and again, this is non-modified. 
four pounds, 11.6 ounces. So right out of the box, this single action is better than most striker fired pistols, but you gotta get to that single action first. Four pounds, 6.3 ounces for an average of four pounds, 8.9 ounces. In my opinion, it's almost five pounds, but still better than most striker fired pistols. So what really gets needed in this gun? Um, to start off with, for me, in my opinion, non-expert opinion that is, it has a lot to do with that hammer spring. Get that hammer spring, a new hammer spring, whether it's a 13 pound, you know, whatever it might be for you guys and whatever gun you're choosing to use, those 13 pound hammer springs do quite a bit. It might even be a 14 pound, I'm not exactly sure. But, uh, and I'll give you an example. So like, let's say for example, I'm gonna use my P09 Omega and it is empty, so everybody don't freak out. So I'm gonna show you with this one. This one does have a hammer spring and this has less rounds than my other P01. So I'll we'll actually do both as comparison to show you. So eight pounds, 11.3 ounces on that first pull. Again, this is a modified hammer spring. Seven pounds, 11.6 ounces for a grand total of eight pounds, 3.4 ounces. So about that eight pound mark. Now, just with that hammer spring, one of the things you're going to notice is that this trigger and this hammer, uh, it, it is just smoothened up quite a bit. I mean, it is much easier to manipulate. It is much easier to really feel that take up to where that hammer is going to stage and then ultimately where it breaks. It just feels perfect. And then with that single action, which we'll measure in a second here, the single action is, it's okay. It's about the same. It feels about the same. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of the Omega triggers. I feel like there's a little bit too much sponginess in these triggers, but that's my opinion. And in regards to the single action pull, look at that, three pounds, 3.1 ounces. So what we're looking at is almost a reduction of over one pound in the trigger pull. Two pounds, 14.5 ounces for an average of almost just flat three pounds. Again, that's with a $20 spring kit in this thing. So for me, that's one of the reasons why I think hammer guns are still very viable and very useful, if, at least if you know what you're doing in regards to getting the springs put in there. Now, take for example, this guy right here, the 225. First off, the single action on this is, is in my opinion, the top dog of all single actions. At least that's my opinion in regards to a carry gun. But in this gun, I did drop a, a wolf spring in here because it, it was incredibly heavy. This gun when I got was like about 11 pounds, almost 12 pounds on this trigger pull. It was terrible. So I put a wolf spring in there. So I want to see what it measures up at now. So the double action right now is seven pounds, 8.2 ounces. Eight point eight seven. So let's see what the average is. So about an eight pound pull on this gun. Now, again, the reset on this is just incredibly sick. Thanks to the SRT trigger. So let's see what this one's pulling up. Four pounds, nine ounces. See if we can beat, beat that. Five pounds. So it's a little heavier. Four pounds, 12.7 ounces. So the saving grace of this trigger is that SRT. And you can see how short this is. Look how short that is. And there's absolutely nothing there. It just breaks really nicely. So that's kind of saving grace on the trigger, even though it's a little bit heavier than, let's say, this one with a hammer spring in it as well. Now, this P01, this has also been modified. So we'll look at this at half cocked. Just get that off camera, get it set up. Seven pounds, 11.1 .1 ounces. So very, very similar to the Omega. Seven pounds, 15.8 ounces. It was a little bit heavier than uh, I could have done better on that one. So seven pounds, 13.5 ounces. So slightly under eight. Um, I think that second pull I did was a little crappy. So it is what it is. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And let's do the single action on this thing really quick. Clear, ready. Four pounds, 1.9 ounces. Three pounds, 11.3 .3 ounces. Four grand total of three pounds, 14.6 ounces, almost four pounds. So again, when you look at the single action, it, it is hard to beat a gun like this in single action. Most single actions, uh, you know, striker fired pistols, whether it's a DAO or single action type, uh, where the, you know, the, the striker is fully cocked, like a PPQ, it's very difficult to find those numbers. And I think even though that first trigger pull is gonna be slightly heavier, if you just drop a hammer spring in here, you're gonna reduce it to a more comfortable range where it's a little bit smoother, a little bit more manageable, 
to break on a nice smooth uh, plane. In regards to that single action, same deal. You're going to drop about a pound on that trigger. And, uh, you know, again, that take up is super easy to control. It's super easy to hold that gun still, even for shaky hands like mine. So the way I look at it is if you're going to be out there and you're going to be talking about, you know, double action, single actions, and you're not exactly sure if it's worth your time, I would absolutely recommend doing it. I think you need to figure out what's going to work for you best. Um, I think you're going to need to figure out if you want to go with polymer or metal frame guns, but ultimately don't count them out. And the reason why I say that is because for a couple of bucks extra, you can actually change these up a little bit that make it a little bit more feasible for you to manage and actually make them a lot easier to shoot. Um, I just think overall, the benefits of double action, single action are still there. The idea that you can, you know, have this gun ready to go and to do whatever it is needs to be done in a self-defense situation, learning how to stage that trigger properly so that you don't have to have much movement when you drop in that single action. And more importantly, knowing that you have that single or that, excuse me, double action, but more importantly, knowing that you have that single action, which is very small, very easy to pull that trigger on it. And of course the added ability to do a double strike. If let's say, for example, you have a, you know, a, a primer issue. I mean, overall, I still think hammer fire guns have a place in everybody's collection or at least on their hip. I know that for me personally, I've been carrying a lot with this and with this. I, I just can't wait to, to keep on shooting these and keep on getting better with them and ultimately making sure that what I have in my collection and things that I carry for me, I'm proficient at. Now, again, these are not all of them. I still have three on the way. I've got the 92 Inox, which I can't wait to get that. I've got the 90-2, which whew, wait till you see that, guys. And I also have the P01 green coming. So I'm super excited to add that because that will be the official last P01 that I want in my collection because now I've got the urban gray, the black, and now the green plus this guy, the PCR. But again, um, you know, sometimes in order to acquire these, you've got to sell other things away. So I have, like I said, moved a little bit away from those striker fired handguns. And honestly, guys, I couldn't be any more happier. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Tell me what you think. Do you think that a hammer-fired system works for you? And if so, why? Would you trust these more than a striker-fired handguns? Do you think that uh, the double-action, single-action is worth it? And you've seen in the video with all the trigger pulls I did that these trigger pulls are fairly good trigger pulls. Eight, anywhere from 7.5 to 8 pounds on the double-action, anywhere from 3.5 to 4 pounds on that single-action. So again, guys, I'd love to hear what you have to say. I will see you soon on our chats and uh, plan on making a video soon about the Caracol. Um, which, you know, we're going to see how it plays out. So I hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe. And as always, everyone, freedom is never free.